Hello, we've got some new paints to review. We were sent some samples from AK Interactive's Real Colours range. We also happen to have some of these paints on order, so we're going to do a review. They're lacquers, so they dry differently to, say, their acrylic range. What's unique about this new range is that they're all based on real colours. They use proper colour chips and proper standards references. What we thought we'd do is spray them. We'll analyse them in terms of their new thinner. We'll use them on a test piece for coverage and so on. And then we'll actually use them on a real project. We thought that was a better way to review a paint range than just sort of spraying what was sent to us. There are plenty of paint ranges around nowadays, but we're not complaining. For us it's really fantastic to see so many different paints. AK is a range we haven't used that much before, so we're quite interested to see how these compare. The bottle is very familiar, it's the sort of Tamiya style bottle. Because they're a lacquer based paint you have to be careful in terms of the fumes. You want to think carefully where you use them. We strongly recommend some sort of uh, respirator and an extraction unit to cope with the fumes. This is uh, the JSP Force 8 respirator which we use. Because of the needs of the video we won't always be using the mask and extractor but it's highly recommended that you do. The plan is then to use some of these paints that were sent as samples with our resin test piece. So we'll do that first and then we'll get cracking on this actual model. What we'll do first though to even everything out with both the test piece and the model is give it a coat of acrylic primer. This is just to get everything the same colour to give a uniform surface for the paint to bind to and a nice light base that you can see what's happening with these paints and how well they go on. One of the first things we're going to do to test the AK real colours is we're going to open some bottles of olive drab and have a look at the consistency and see whether it needs diluting. We're going to try and compare not only the real colours high compatibility thinner but we're also going to use lacquer thinner by Tamiya that some modellers may have access to. The paints we've gone for then are olive drab RC023 and we'll also use olive drab faded RC024. Like with all paints you need to give them a good shake get 10 millilitres. The first thing that strikes you is the odour. It's quite strong. Here's how the paint comes out of the bottle. It's fairly thick. For airbrushing we won't even attempt to spray that but what we will do is we'll dilute some of it with the own brand thinner and some with the lacquer thinner. First of all with the lacquer thinner roughly the same amount. Let's see how that dilutes. It dilutes fairly well but it looks like you need an equal quantity and it needs a good mix. Either way we'll attempt spraying that through the airbrush. We're not going to do a detailed breakdown of every single type of thinners you can use with this but we will use the own brand. In this case about 30 to 70 as a ratio. And that dilutes of course as you'd expect. Let's spray this one first. This is the own brand thinners. First observations are that it sprays really, really well. It dries to a nice matte finish. The coverage is excellent. The pigmentation is fantastic. It gives a really flat coat. It beds down nicely over the primer. It gives a really smooth finish. We'll zoom in so you can see that. That's really impressive. They're very easy to spray. There's no tip dry at all. and it didn't need much paint to get that sort of opacity and coverage. Over here is the Tamiya lacquer thinner. Let's see how that does. It hasn't emulsified or anything, it's still smooth. 
this way you'll be able to contrast the top which is the AK Real Colors high compatibility thinner and on the back plate the Tamiya. It sprayed just fine using the Tamiya lacquer thinner. You can see that the paint went on just as well. What we plan to do then is we'll give it a blast with a bit more of the Olive Drab RCO23 and then a top coat of the faded Olive Drab RCO24 and we'll catch up and see what it looks like. Here's the end result out of the spray booth. The paint sprayed really really well with both the lacquer thinner and the high compatibility thinner. You can see the finish is really really smooth and it gives excellent quality coverage. Overall we're really impressed with that. What we're going to do is let the paint dry and then we'll do a quick decal test. We'll seal this piece of armour in clear and we'll see how decals go on. We're applying micro set without any issues. It goes on both where it's been protected by clear and where it's straight onto the paint. The micro set goes on without any problems. You can see here this is the section where there was no clear added. This is the decal placed straight on the section painted with the real colours. There was no reaction with micro set and we'll just apply a little bit of micro sole and likewise the paint is absolutely fine. And here it is when everything's dry. Another useful test is to see how resilient paints are. Because these are lacquer paints, they should be tougher. So we took our test piece and we damaged the paint to see how resistant it was. You can see we used a wooden cuticle pusher and tried to degrade the paint. It really required quite a strong degree of force with the cuticle pusher to actually damage the paint. That's how tough it is. It resists small scrapes quite easily. It doesn't peel or come apart under pressure. So we've got some paint on the Panhard armoured car. It's primed, we've added some shadow. We've gone for this reference, Dunkel Gelb, dark yellow, it's a variant, RC062, and we'll probably lighten it with some off-white a bit later. We're going to use the high compatibility thinner. We'll just start building up the paint. see just how good the coverage is. We're just going to remove the turret. So we'll do all this top portion. We'll put on the mask now and go to the spray booth. It just goes on really well, really smooth. Generally lacquer paints are better sprayed through an airbrush, but just out of curiosity, because we're going to do some modulation, we want to see how well they brush paint. First we'll try it just over the primer. We're just going to see how they go on over plastic. You can see quite a few brush marks. What we'll do is let that dry off and then we'll compare them. When brush painted the real colours dry really quite well, especially on the primer. We were happy enough to use them brush painted on our model and we used them to pick out the details for the modulation. If you want to see more of this model build we're planning to do a full build series soon. All in all an excellent range of paints that performed really well on the test piece, they're compatible with other thinners, they're resistant and strong to both decal products and just wear over time, they're really fine, very high quality and give an excellent finish. Thanks for watching and bye. Subscribe for our latest videos.